One of the first things you're going to have to do when you get your epilogue laser and before you start operating it is to install the exhaust system. It's really important to exhaust all the fumes and all the material um, that can gather inside the laser when you are uh, when you are engraving or cutting. And um, the the front components right here I purchased from a hardware store. Um, all in, it was about forty dollars. That included two boxes of eight foot long. 4 inch wide foil duct, um, 3 6 inch hose clamps, and a roll of aluminum foil tape, uh, which I was told is much more heat resistant than regular duct tape. So, I uh, got that all down at the hardware store, uh, $40 all in, um, and then the two boxes behind here, uh, one is the air compressor, which runs the air assist function uh, on the epilogue. This was $65 from Harbor Freight Tools. I also ordered the industrial dust collector, uh, which was $128, also from Harbor Freight Tools. So all in, um, at Harbor Freight, I was in for about $215, and then $40 at the hardware store, so that puts me about $255 worth of extra components, um, in addition to the purchase price of the epilogue, uh, that you need to basically get your epilogue up and running. Um, additionally, uh, you know, the, you might need some hand tools, cutters, Phillips head screwdriver, uh, we'll see. I haven't installed it yet, so we'll find out exactly what we're going to need to um, get this thing up and running. Okay, so it looks like we're all set to install the exhaust system. I've got my hand tools, I've got my foil duct, my aluminum tape, my pipe clamps, my owner's manual to walk me through it, and the dust collector and the air pump are ready to go, but they are on the ground. Um, as you can see, I don't have a lot of workspace or workbenches set up in my shop yet, but uh, I need to get this machine up and running, so naturally I'm using the laser as a table. One of the really nice things about the Helix Epilogue Laser um, is that it comes on its own kind of platform with rolling wheels. Um, and even though it's a 300 pound machine, I found that it rolls really well. I've got cement floors in my shop, and there's kind of some paint, and we're doing a lot of work inside the shop as it is. So even despite that, it's, uh, it still rolls really smoothly. And until I get all the walls finished, um, I'm gonna need to roll this machine around when I use it. Uh, so I'm gonna roll it to the garage door and, uh, and then put the exhaust pipe out there and, um, and just plug everything in uh, when I need to use it. Now when the walls are finished and we're done painting and everything, um, I'm gonna move it to a permanent location and install a much longer permanent pipe. Um, I'll probably end up getting a new exhaust fan as well, but for right now, um, this kind of, you know, uh, rolling system that I've got should do the trick as far as uh, starting to cut and engrave parts. So here we've got the exhaust tube that comes with the laser. Um, it actually comes uh, separated out and you have to install, uh, you just install it in the back there. The uh, four Phillips head screws are already um, attached to the machine, so you just unscrew those out and you put the pipe in. For time reasons, I'm not going to uh, repeat the process. I'm just going to take it from here. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of my foil duct and fit it around the pipe. So I'm just going to uh, now um, seal the duct with some aluminum foil. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever worked with this type of tape, so I'm just kind of winging it here. Uh, I want to create a nice seal um, around the edge here, so I'm just going to uh, pull it taut and uh, see what happens. That should be good. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it tears just fine. And I'm just gonna seal it off here. Like that. Now I'm going to take my pipe clamp and fit this.
I'm going to try to fit it um, snug to the base, because, uh, or as close as I can, I suppose. Um, just seems like the best option. I don't really know why, but it seems like it's better than it would be if I did it at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to take the remainder of the foil duct and I am going to take the other end of it and put it on the intake of the dust collector. So notice, uh, this is where the dust collector bag would usually go. We're not going to use the, the bag here because we're going to exhaust, um, or we're going to point the exhaust uh, to another tube and we're going to blow that outside. So, like before, I'm going to use the aluminum foil tape to um, create a nice seal with the dust collector. Uh, kind of learned from my last time of trying to, to wield it, uh, I cut pre-lengths of it um, so that I, I think it'll be a little bit easier to work with this time, um, hopefully. So I'm just going to do a couple wraps here. should be pretty good to go. Again, I'm going to take a cable or a, a pipe clamp. I'm going to thread that in. Just because I'm going to be rolling it around, it's going to be moving, and uh, I don't want it to pop off. So I'm contemplating not having to use the second attachment of foil duct at all. Um, this is attached directly to the machine, and it blows out the exhaust. So theoretically, I could just roll this out to my garage door, and it would um, it would do the exact same thing. However, if this dust collector is noisy, which I suspect it will be, um, it might be too noisy to have at the base of my garage, and I might want to have it inside so that uh, I'm not disturbing the other uh, neighbors that I've got in this industrial complex. So I'm just going to turn the machine on and uh, just kind of assess what happens. Interesting how the the suction from the dust collector uh, kind of condenses that that length of foil duct. Um, I think the machine is actually quiet enough to where I don't need to attach that second hose. And uh, if somebody says something, then I think uh, I think I can address it at that point. But uh, it's really not that loud or abrasive. Um, it's just kind of blowing out, and uh, I think I can get away with it. So now that the exhaust is installed, I'm now going to install the uh, air compressor to the air assist, uh, which is located um, on the back of the machine, the back left, and you can see that um, it's calling for a 30 PSI max, so I'm going to have to set my air compressor to 30, although with the epilogue rep that I spoke to, he said um, sometimes, you know, with these curly air compressor pipes, uh, some of the pressure is lost, so he actually recommended um, that I set it to 33 or 34, so I'm going to have to experiment with that a little bit, but now it's time to um, get the air compressor hooked up. So this is the tube, or the hose, I keep saying tube, um, this is the hose that came with my um, air compressor that I got from Harbor Freight and this is the hose that came with the machine. Um, I am just going to uh, snip this cable off right here and that uh, this end fits into the air compressor and this end will simply fit right into there if everything goes to plan. I'm going to use my cable cutters and cut that like that insert that like that and boom perfect fit so we're pretty much all set air assist is hooked up the exhaust system is hooked up and here you see the air compressor and the dust collector on the ground <laughs> 